Hello, greetings. I welcome you to today's message. It is my prayer that God will, will bless us as we listen to his word in the name of Jesus Christ. I actually traveled and I sincerely apologize because I couldn't preach this message yesterday being Sunday. I'm in a hotel room. There was so much noise yesterday, but I had to look for a way to record this message as early as possible before it becomes noisy again. Let us pray. Thank you, mighty Redeemer. Thank you, our God. We know the whole earth and the whole heavens are before you. You direct the course of everything in the world and in heaven. O oh Lord our God, we know you are still in charge and that you have never lost control of the world despite the different things happening here and there. Lord, we ask that you teach us to number our days, help us to live a holy life, help us to fulfill your will so that on the last day we will be those who will rejoice among the saints who have gone to be with you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're talking about before the judge of the whole world. Before the judge of the whole world. There is a judge that is coming to judge the whole world. There is a judge that is coming to take charge. There is a judge that is coming to harvest the world. The world is ripe enough for harvest and the judge of the whole world will soon come. Before the earth became chaotic, the Lord revealed to us that these times will actually come and that there will be a time that men will be lawless men will be lovers of themselves men will do whatsoever thing they like that a time is coming where there will be a falling away and we are in that time that was prophesied But we as believers, it is good we continue to remind ourselves that no matter how much chaotic the world becomes, the judge of the whole earth is definitely going to come again. And every single person we stand before the judgment seat of God, where everyone is going to give account of whatsoever thing they have done in the body. What is it like to stand in the dark, to defend yourself before an earthly judge? I don't know if you have ever be, been in a law court and you have to defend yourself. This time around, it is going to be before the judge of the whole earth. Let's look at the test for today. Revelations chapter 20. 11 to 15. Please read with me. Revelations, Revelation 20, 11 to 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Please, I want you to take note of these, this particular sentence. And him that sat on it, from whose face the whole earth and the heaven fled away. This signifies that the earth that rebelled 
we flee away from the face of him that sits on the throne. Because it will be a day of retribution. It is going to be a day of accountability. It's not like today where people can say whatsoever thing they want and they get away with it. It's not like today where nations rise up against nations and kill innocent people and get away with it. It is not like today where people find themselves in position of authority and they feel it is an opportunity to steal and steal and amass even the amount of wealth that the whole of their generation cannot finish and get away with it. It is not going to be like today where anybody can claim to be a man of God or a woman of God and do whatsoever thing they want and bribe the press bribe the, the government, bribe the, the, the courts, bribe the law enforcement agencies and get away with it. It is not going to be like that. It is not going to be a time like this where people can do anything they want to their own bodies and get away with it because it is their own body. It is going to be a time that the mighty men, the great men, the kings, the powerful people are going to stand before the face of him who has all power, from whom all power and authority emanated. It is going to be a time that the knees of most people will not be able to bear the weight of their bodies. It is going to be a time that Every single memory of everything we have done will come alive. It is going to be a time where lies will lose their power. When you tell a lie, you, in fact, you will know instantly that lies will never work. Lies will never save you. It is going to be a time of sincerity, thorough sincerity, sincerity from the heart because lies will have nothing to offer on that day because the eyes of the Lord will see through the marrows of your heart. It's going to see through the very depth of the deepest secrets of your heart. It is going to be a time that deception will have no place. It's, it's going to play no role it's going to be a terrible time. It's going to be a time that money will fail. It's going to be the time that position and power will fail. The heaven and the earth will flee from the face of him who sits on the throne to give judgment. Why would they flee? It is because of rebellion. When we see this word here, heaven, this is not talking about the heaven that God dwells. This is talking about the powers that are above the earth. The powers that dwell, you know, there are different heavens. The powers that dwell, not just on the earth, but also in heaven, in the heavens. They will flee before the face of him who sits on the throne. Let's continue to read. 12, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which we have written in, in the books according to their work. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and, the de and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And 
death and hell we are cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When I look at the world today and I see people looking for solution, solution to the problems of life, and some of them taking their own lives. This week, okay, last week, a lady working in the bank in Nigeria wrote a note and took her own life. And she said, God have mercy on me, and she took her own life. Remember, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Was she merciful to herself? If she was merciful to herself, she wouldn't have taken her own life. A lot of people feel that when, when we die, then it is over. They feel that all the troubles of this world are too much. So let me just go. And they feel that when they leave, then they are exonerated. They, they are going to find peace. Yes, you will find peace. You will find peace for your flesh. Temporary peace for your, for your flesh because your flesh is going to decay. But foolishly, a lot of people think that it is a flesh that is a real human being. Listen, you are a spirit living in an earthly body. And let me shock you, when we leave this world, there is going to be, let's say, let me read for you, there is going to be accountability. The sea is going to give account of all the dead in it. Look at verse 13, Revelation 20, 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. The bad news is, there is no escape. You are not going to escape. If you feel, oh, let me take my own life and just get out of this wicked world. There is no peace. Even in death. Because death and hell, the sea, will give account. The dead who died in the sea those who died in the ground, every one of them will come back to life. There will be the resurrection of the dead. They will either be resurrected to life eternal or to everlasting destruction. Before the judge of all the earth, we will all stand and give account of everything we have done in the body. When I look at majority of Christians today who go to church and see the standard of their religiosity, I weep. I feel a very deep pain in my heart when I see that a lot of people who go to church don't even think about the judgment of God. If, if they actually have this in mind that every one of us will stand before the judgment seat of God, 
Why is it that a lot of people pick offense? Even an usher telling you, please don't sit here, come and sit here. People feel offended and they say, okay, if you treat me this way, I'm not going to go to church again. A lot of people feel offended even when they are corrected. A simple correction can make someone say, I don't want to worship God again. Oh, so you feel you're going to judge to please your pastor? Does God actually need your money? Does God need your money? Or do you think that the true church of God actually need you? You need the church of God. So if you feel that, oh, I don't want to go to church again, uh, I'm done. You are not doing the church any harm. You are doing yourself harm. I am not saying that God doesn't need you. He needs your soul. He wants you to be saved. But everything is for your own good. Without you, the church is going to exist. But without the church, you are not you have no life. Without Jesus, you have no life in you. Jesus Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. A lot of you want to exist without Jesus Christ. A lot of you feel that you can do it without God, without Christ. But you are deceiving yourself. A lot of people pick offense and they say, No, I don't want to give to God again anymore. I don't want to. Listen, with your giving, without your giving, the work of God will move forward. God doesn't need you to exist. You need God to exist. You need God to gain eternal life. So for those of you who feel that you have some good reasons not to go to church, you have some good reasons not to be faithful to God, I tell you, your reasons are not good enough. For very soon we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God and we will all give accounts of everything we have done in the body. How many of you today are still thinking about the judgment seat of Christ? Every year we make New Year resolutions. This is another New Year. People have resolutions and people execute these resolutions. People have plans, budgets. How many of us have it in mind and they background of our mind when we make our resolutions that in all my schedules, in all my plans, in all my resolutions, I must make sure I live a holy life. Because we will all we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. How many of us? Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to prosper. Everybody wants to be alive. Everybody wants a good life. But how many of us, in course of making all these plans, are pursuing righteousness, holiness, faithfulness? How many of us? How many of us are seeking the kingdom of God first and His righteousness so that all other things can be added unto us how many of us? Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody is pursuing success. But is your soul prospering before the sight of God? 
Are you prospering in the sight of God? Are you after these things that we are going to leave behind at the expense of your, the rest, eternal rest for your soul? I preached a message last year, and I tied to the message, the grace to die. The grace to die. You also need grace to die. Not just the grace to be alive and live life and enjoy life. We need the grace to die too. Do you know that the end of a thing is better than its beginning? Do you know that the day of death is better than the day of birth? We celebrate our birthdays and we throw parties. We expect people to give us gifts. But how many of us think about our death day? Fortunately, we see people who are 80 years old, 70 years old plus, 90 years old, praying against death. Instead of preparing for death, they are praying against death. A lot of people sing, Brother, will you die? I shall not die. Sister, will you die? I shall not die. Brother, will you die? I shall not die, but live to declare the works of God. Yes, it is good. We live to declare the works of God, the glory of God. But death is something we will all face one day. Let me tell you, you will die when your day comes. Our prayer is that we shouldn't die before our time. But unfortunately, we don't know when we're living here. We have no idea of when we are going to die. That is why we need to prepare at every point in time. Confess your sins before God every day and repent of all your sins. Listen to what Ecclesiastes says. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 1 and 8. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death better than the day of one's birth. Verse 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. How are you going to end your life? A lot of us are concerned about how we are born. A lot of us are more concerned about the journey of life. How many people are concerned about standing before the judge of the whole earth? A judge who will never accept a bride. How many of us are concerned about that? What shall it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Matthew 16, 26 and 27. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels and then shall and then he shall reward every man according to his work the day of reward is coming have you saved your soul have you been able to secure a place of rest for your soul A lot of people are preparing for retirement. Retirement of few years. Maybe just a decade or two decades. People work so hard because they are preparing for retirement. But how many people want to work hard for eternity? 
people are depriving themselves of sleep because they want to save for the rainy day for their old age. But how many people are preparing hard for eternity? Do you know that a lot of people leave this world, in fact, most people leave this world lamenting, crying, regretting? Listen, brethren, I owe you and myself nothing but the truth. And it is better not to speak than speak and not speak the truth at all. I have told myself that for as long as I am alive, I will tell myself, first, I will tell myself the truth and also tell every single human being in this world the truth. We are flying away quickly. It's time to get ourselves ready because there is no time. That day that we will stand before the Lord is going to be a terrible day. Let's read the last scripture for today. Revelation 6, 14 to 17. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Listen, you will not be able to stand. Tremble today, that on that day you will not tremble before his presence. Rather, you will rejoice. Fear today and repent. Tremble today so that you will not shake tomorrow. Have the fear of God in your heart today and tremble at His word today so that you will not ask the mountains to fall on you and hide you from the face of Him who is coming to avenge the blood of all the saints and judge the world because of the wickedness they have wrought in this world. It is time to call ourselves to order. The King is coming. The judge of all the earth is coming. And he will not delay. He is coming. Let us pray. Lord, we know you are coming. You are coming to judge all mankind. Help us to live right. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to live right, O oh Lord God. Help us to be faithful to you. Help us, Lord to be faithful to the end. We know the King is coming. 
Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you. Help us never to get carried away. Help us, Lord, to repent genuinely and to follow you to the end. Lord, I pray for your children, those who are struggling with sin. Help them, O oh Lord God. Help your people to escape the fire of hell. Help your people to make it into your kingdom, Lord. That when we shall stand before you, the judge of the whole earth, we will have reasons to smile. We will have reasons to rejoice in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. Thank you, Father. I pray for us many who are supporting this ministry that you will support them. I pray for us many who are sick that you will heal them. Thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. Hosanna E. David. And don't forget to share this video. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Those of you who want to support us, feel very free to support us. We encourage you to give and support this ministry. Our content is on the screen. Please support us. We need your support. Not many people support us because we speak the truth. But if you let, please do well to support us. God bless you.